football on the mic ran away from me. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Oh my goodness. Are we are we currently now at this moment live on Facebook? Oh my god, behind the fourth wall, everybody. How are we doing? It's been it's been a minute, guys. Last time I was with you guys, I was with uh Eli Haber and uh fuck, that was like twelve days ago or something. It was too long. Too long. Nevertheless, I felt compelled and obligated to come to you guys tonight because uh, one of my favorite comics, one of my favorite new comics here at Fourth Wall is this beautiful, large, redneck ginger man. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> what is your real name, my friend? Say it out loud. My name is David Bear. 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 I go by Bear. And of course he does. Like, yeah. Look, okay, this is the first time I've sat on camera with someone. And our heads are almost the same size. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, it's like, like I uh, I did a podcast with a comic named, um, oh shit, what was his name? Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. He's, he's, he was a he looks like a normal fella on camera until I get next to him, and then like I had to, I literally had to sit like this the whole podcast as he leaned forward like Dumb and Dumber style, right? <laughs> Dude, so every one of my pictures like that I take with my mom, my sister, my brother back home, <laughs> yeah. like I'm always in the background like <laughs> leaning back just so our heads will be the same size. Dude, I don't know what that is, man. Like what uh, what size is your head, do you know? Um, seven and a half, seven three quarters, something like that. Damn, That's my hat size. I don't mean to uh, brag, because uh, it's not a brag, because uh, I can't wear hats. Eight. Eight. Solid Holy shit. Solid eight, my friends. Damn, you got a big head. I know. I walked into Lids, or at the time it was Hat World. Yeah. And they, they, the guy, this guy looked like he was stoned out of his mind. He was just like a young Mexican kid. And I was like, do you guys have eights? And he went, no. <laughs> 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 they literally, they even called the manager over and he was like, bro, I, I, uh, I can't help you. I don't, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what we can do. Uh, it's but I met a guy who works at Flappers. I can't remember his name for the life of me. His head size is a nine. Holy Can you even shit? Yeah, because it's like I've got a giant head. You got a big head at seven and a half. What do you got to do to have nine? A, dude, like your poor mom. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no shit. How the fuck did that happen? Oh my god, it's so big. It's so much head. That's that's got to be like steroids, right? Like just packing out the neck. Like extra I don't know. How does I, that? I don't know, man. I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I can't really comprehend the <laughs> nine, right? Like, cause like I, I had a, a pituitary issue, right? Like yeah. I, most of my size, actually, I credit to uh, the fact that I had to take for from fourteen to sixteen, I had to take human growth hormone. Okay. Because uh, I had a, I had a erectile cyst wrapped around my pituitary gland, right? Mine was just I hate running, so I said fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> But like I, uh, I I suffered from really bad migraines like all the way up until I was uh, fourteen. Yeah, and so I went to this doctor who, uh, Doctor Hardman was his name, uh, a, a very nice old man, right? And I went in one day and I was uh, I think it was right before I turned thirteen, like but right before my fourteenth birthday, and uh, he was just like, "You're going to be 14? I was like, "Yeah, you're my doctor. You should fucking know." But he was like, no, no, no. He's like, eh, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And so, like, he went and he x-rayed my uh, my growth plate right here in my bones. Yeah. And found out that I hadn't aged for five years. What? Yeah. Cause, you like, didn't age at all? Age at all. I, I hadn't grown. Like, it, like my body, like, uh, the, the, the rectal cyst had wrapped around my pituitary gland. So, and so as a 14-year-old kid, you were walking around in a nine-year-old's body? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. High school was super cool, dude. Super chill. Lots of... <laughs> <laughs> I literally didn't hit puberty until I was 18. There was actually uh, one of these days I'm going to uh, address it probably publicly because I'll have to. Uh, my first, uh, my, my high school sweetheart, I guess you could call her. Yeah. Uh, her name was Gabby. She, uh, we dated uh, from when I was uh, 16 to 17, and she was younger than that. We won't say that out loud. It's fine. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <coughs> when we broke up, she had told a bunch of people, especially my friends included, he had the smallest penis I had ever seen, which, by the way, a hoary statement to say out loud, right? Especially considering uh, I took her virginity. So how many penises had she seen before? I mean, even if you've seen two penises, you don't want to be the smallest. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 you're right. You're right. No, no, you're 100% correct. But here's the deal. That was pre-puberty. She had seen the goods before the growth you know what i mean like okay. She, <laughs> so, okay so like as strange as it is every part of me just wants to like call her up and be like listen bitch 
Hey, it's not the littlest yeah. anymore, it's God not damn it. If anything, it's actually impressive as shit and would surprise you. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I, I think about that every now and again. Like, I, 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 was, I was so self-conscious about it because I, I didn't hit puberty until I was 18. So I'm in high school and, like, everyone else is hitting puberty and getting their dick growth spurts. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just, I'm just chilling in sadness uh, <laughs> with a tiny little dick. Uh, give me one second while I pull up our uh, our stream here so we can actually see what the fuck. Oh, there we are. Boom. Boom. Nailed it. Let's see if anyone's fucking commenting on this motherfucker. So, okay, let's say uh, Benjamin Button. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Brian Michael. That basically, basically. Uh, I want to talk to you because you, 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 uh, you're one of my favorite fucking people that come here. One of my favorite Thanks, new man. people that come here. Cause I appreciate you, that. You you make me feel like I'm at home. You have such a beautiful accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I get that. <laughs> rightfully so. That in like uh, me and Bear earlier were talking about. Uh, if you don't know, if you're if you're a man in L.A. right now struggling, if you've got a redneck accent, or you from uh, so if you're a good old boy, I should say, and you think no women here want you, what you should know is uh, me and Bear are going to go to a bar right next to the comedy store. That is literally a country bar. It's where it's where people go because they don't want to live in their hometown. However, they still love the country life. I hope it's anything like the Electric Cowboy in Little Rock. If you know anything about the I, Electric I, Cowboy I went, in Little Rock, I don't. However, uh, I went. To, uh, there was a place in Ohio called the Yellow Rose, right? Yeah. And that was one of those places where it's just like my mom took square dancing lessons there. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's the same place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a, yeah, 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 same place. Yeah. Uh, so that yeah, like we're so we're gonna go to that place, and I know we will clean up because everyone who goes there is like faux redneck, and we're actual actual. Are we gonna live stream it? That'd be funny. We should. I'm gonna put a grow, GoPro on my head while we go and just smash these hoes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's what's gonna be happening. But uh, yeah, no. At least it'll be funny. We'll talk to them. Yeah. We'll definitely nice. talk to him. Yeah, talking to him. <laughs> yeah. We'll definitely be polite and talk we'll to be, him. <laughs> be real nice and courteous. May even uh, go on a date with a few of them. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, see, I like. Uh, okay, here, here's here's a story that I feel like uh, is pretty fascinating for you. It'll give you more hope because you, you're how long you been out here? I've been here since November. Moved out here November first. Yeah. This is fresh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I went on a date with a girl. Who uh, this uh, Hispanic girl who uh, super cute had a big crush on her right, and it just seemed a little weird right we kind of didn't get along blah blah blah. Six months later, I go on a date with another girl, tall skinny Jewish chick, gorgeous girl, really fun to talk to, a lot of fun, and then I add her on Facebook. They are roommates. The girl, the girl that I'm talking about, these two different oh. girls. They were roommates, right? Did you know? No, I had no idea. That's Absolutely awesome. no idea. Like I had a crush on both of them at the same time. But here, here, my my point is, I'm a particular flavor of white guy. <laughs> what are the okay. odds that a Hispanic girl <laughs> and a Jewish girl living in the same household have the same taste of white guy? <laughs> they were both like, "Hey, fuck it, that'll do." That'll do. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. To be fair, uh, neither of them uh, called me back, so apparently I wasn't their flavor. Well, at least you tried, and Fair that's more than I've done since I've been here. I have done. But you're so you're so new, though. I mean, all I've done is open mics and try to get on shows. That's all you should be doing, dude. Right now, okay. Like uh, when I came back out here, I came back here, uh, uh, January 2017, right? Yeah. Uh, I moved here with my ex uh, from Virginia. Whatever. Like, been there. I, <laughs> word. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't L.A., but it was. Yeah, yeah, but you but yeah, you've moved yeah. and you lived with your exes, right? Yeah. So okay, like I uh I have no will, urge, or desire to date a single woman out here. Like I just I don't have it in me. Like right now, like I'm even like I'm pseudo definitely super homeless, it doesn't matter. Uh <laughs> but like uh, all I care about right now is comedy. Like this is such a beautiful, perfect place to envelop yourself in this scene. Dude, I get that a yeah. lot. And, like, for me, um, it was weird because I broke up with a girl that I was in a relationship with for about a year right yeah. before I came out here. Right. And so in coming from Little Rock where you could hit, like, one mic a night or maybe get four shows a week 
and here you can get like three, four a night. Right. That oh, dude, yeah. That's all I want to do. Like that's what I'm diving in towards, and that's all I want to spend my time doing right, right. now, at least. And yeah, so, and rightfully so. Like I, I, uh, I even joined a few dating apps, like more, some of the more serious dating apps, right? And like just so not to, like Tinder and Bumble, but like but yeah, but like the ones, that, yeah, Hinge. The Hinge, <laughs> I described Hinge as like. I need a date right now. Like it's it's, it's, it's one of those where it's just like yeah, it may, it's it's just people that are like <laughs> losing hope in LA. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, but like I could never find a fucking moment of availability at night. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you know what? Most of the time, I didn't have a fucking problem with it. Like I really had no problem telling these girls, uh, "No, sir, I'll be at fourth wall." I mean, if you want to stop by there and see me, you can, but I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not going to fucking bail on my goddamn... And it's uh, Will Sennett. Uh, I, I should give him a shout out to every fucking time I do a podcast. Cause Will Sennett's one of my favorite young comics. Uh, you know Will Sennett, right? Uh, maybe. He does that joke, uh, the faggot joke, <laughs> about him being definitely not made of a bundle of sticks. Um, Tall, no. He looks like he would guard an SS tower, just German as a motherfucker. Okay. Um, fair, yeah, fair, fair, fair enough. I mean, I'm, I'm I've sure. met a lot of people since I moved here, so I haven't I got everybody's name. And it's face a, it's down overwhelming, yet. dude. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah, because it's like uh, me and Joe figured out we we meet so many people. I my mom, uh, I don't talk to her that often, but she called me the other day, and uh, she was just listing off these cousins and what they were doing. Yeah. I have no memory of their existence. Like, You're like, who's I meet that? I meet so many people that I have flushed them out. Of wow, brain. I know it's uh, it's sad. Uh, eventually, I uh, hopefully I'll forget uh, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> was, Don't worry, I'll never forget your mom. This, <laughs> this guy, this fucking guy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. But. Uh, after that mom joke, honestly, I don't even know what the fuck we were talking about. <laughs> you forgot your cousins. You're an asshole cousin. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we meet a lot of people. We meet a lot of people. Will, the guy that Will you Will Yeah, yeah, yeah. It... Nevertheless, like, this is... We're, we're, we're very fortunate, especially. Like, I actually, I'm uh, happy you didn't start here. Yeah. Cause it's, it's Dude, really, me too. It's, it's nice to talk to somebody that knows what it's like on, in a different scene and stuff yeah. like that, man. Like, like because uh, I did... Uh, a combination of, I believe, five fucking years in Ohio before I ever came out here. Yeah. Uh, I moved out here with uh, originally five other comics. One of them has already left, but... Um, <laughs> does, that, does that hurt you deep? Man, fuck that guy. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, is that who? Is that who I may be replacing? Is your yeah, roommate? that's who you're. If you move in with me, that's who you're. Replacing. By the way, I'm probably definitely if he allows me, gonna move in with this guy. <laughs> yeah, maybe we're talking well, with the roommates and yeah, getting everything situated. Out. But uh, yeah, if they need uh, hand job, then what? That's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Kayla actually, she needs it the most. She's got the biggest and the, needs the most attention. <laughs> anyway, I moved uh, out here with I'm five comics. <laughs> And we had all mean, from Arkansas, five comics from yeah, Arkansas, all from Little Rock. And how come I've only met one of them? You came here with one. Um, because I mean, Kayla and Josh have been here several times, but uh, the twins, they're they're a twin act, they're one act. They came out here together. Oh yeah, I've never met them. And they've been going up and been doing well at What's the comedy Kayla's store. Kayla, Kayla Esmond. Oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen Kayla Esmond, and I think I've seen your buddy before, uh, like uh, 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 independently of you before. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. we all moved out here together, and I was the least experienced cool, comic on in the group. I'd only been You're doing You're a year it, deep, right? Yeah, a year and a half. Damn, man. And so everybody else is like four or five years in. They're like, hey, we're moving to Hollywood. That's incredible. And I was in a situation where it was like, I don't want to do what I'm doing anymore, and I want to pursue comedy. So I jumped on board, and I'm kind of throwing myself headfirst into it, putting as much work into it as I can. Trying it's to turn man. it into a job versus see a that's hobby. why that's, that's my that's my favorite shit right there because it's like um, uh, Will said it he's only like a year and a half in or something like that yeah. he actually he asked me the other day he was like should I lie and tell people I've been doing it longer and I'm like no so you kidding me like that like when you tell me you've been doing it for a year and then I see your set I'm like no fucking way see I I it's like I'm self conscious about it because I don't want people to hear that I've been doing it for a year and like. Write me off as like, oh well, I shouldn't even listen to this guy. Like he's no, not. no, no. You you are like, that's the thing I love the most about comedy. It's it's the great equalizer is you on that fucking stage. That's true. It's like no, it doesn't. It does not matter how long you've been doing it, who you are, what the fuck you're doing. Like, I've noticed that the, the closest group or the the click at, at times at fourth wall are all just people that get on that fucking stage. 
Yeah. And just own that shit, man. Yeah. And like most of the time like even when we hang out sometimes we don't even get along at all <laughs> but it's just like we have just such a beautiful mutual respect for one another because yeah. we we all know what it feels like to get up there and run out of shit to say and then you're like fuck i got three <laughs> minutes left i better yeah. figure it out well that is i mean you 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 have figured your yourself out yeah which is so it's so fucking cool to see man oh wait we got comments what's going on here uh, i'll be in la next week at the nom show check out the comments here Brian Michael, I know Brian Michael. I do apologize for not knowing who the fuck you are. Beaver hunting, whoever Mike Brennan is. Beaver hunting. <laughs> He's from uh, Virginia. Does. Oh, Brian, my a. I know you, Brian. <coughs> yeah, dude, come to Fourth Wall, man. It's in North Hollywood. Um, do message me on Facebook. Well, uh, if you're from Ohio, I'll, I'll get you a free set for sure, man. I'll pay for your set one hundred percent. Uh, <laughs> if I tell you I'm from Ohio, will you pay for my set? <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, you're funny. You got to work for it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I respect that. You know, that's, that's one of those things, too. It's like uh, I had a lot of my improv friends because I, I did Groundlings uh, for a little while when I yep. came out here. And like when they found out I was working at the fourth wall, like two of them came through and wanted to be like, uh, I'm going to try a stand up set. And neither of them were good, but yeah. uh, I paid for each of them mainly because I was like, "This is going to be the only time I ever see you here." Yeah, because <laughs> you're going to get on the stage and eat just the fattest of dicks, dude. I've seen like in Little Rock, we're very blessed that right there in North Little Rock, right across the river, there's a place called the Joint, and oh, the joint. they have an improv oh, yeah. group called the Joint Venture that yeah. they're actually pretty fucking good, and That's they cool, man. like. They'll get oh, up dude, and dude, their yeah. members will do stand up and stuff, and yeah. it's weird because like you hear stand up, like you're used to seeing somebody's act. Where like I've seen their five, I've seen their ten, right. I've seen their fifteen. I know what jokes they're gonna do. Well, all the improv guys, they never do the same set twice. It's like they'll write it that right. day, and it won't be necessarily improv in the moment, but they'll like write it that day and then never do it again. And it's it's something that Which I is, respect because as a stand up that someone that's only done stand up, right. like once I have a joke land, it's like that's my baby. That's the yeah. one I'm saying that one a hundred times. That, that, that is the saddest thing about improv because it's like I I've had moments even on stage or in class or in rehearsal yeah. that are so funny and yet they will just exist in that moment. You know right. what I mean? Like that's that, part of what improv is. Is because yeah. like with the context of everything that's going on in that moment, you can never recapture that and that's part of yeah. like my style of stand-up like i love telling stories that's what my favorite thing to do is is to get on stage and tell people about like my friends and family and stuff that we shenanigans we got into yeah and that's home. that's the coolest part too because it's like like there's a relatable nature about your personality but at the same time it's, it's it's like the shit that i say it's like they can relate because a lot of people are white trash but <laughs> at the same time it's like that next level weirdness, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, uh, how old are you, by the way? 25. 25? Okay. What age were you when you started meeting people and telling them about your life and they went, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it was about, uh, it's when I moved out of Garden. Um, about naturally, 18. Naturally. Yeah, 18, yeah, 19, that's, that's around about there. It, yeah. I started moving out, telling like telling people about you know different rodeos that I'd done or different things that I'd done. <laughs> so cool. And they're just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> to everyone where I'm from, that's normal. That's like I'm nothing special. But to when you talk to somebody that's never been in that environment before, they're like, oh, man, that sounds really cool. Oh, yeah. Like uh, there was a, a friend of mine, Nathan Hall is his name. He's a comic from Ohio, but he moved to Chicago. Uh, I was just kind of like hanging out at his house one night. Yeah. And like he was like trying to build a fire in his fire pit. And he's from a... a the most city you can get in my area, you know what I mean? And, like, I'm just, like, picking up these burning logs and chucking them because he didn't have a fucking shovel or anything. Yeah. And he was just like, what are you, you fucking say? Are you picking up fiery logs? I'm like, yeah, man, you got to get this fucking <laughs> fire right. Like, what are you talking about? It's like, you're a savage. I'm like, wait, yeah. <laughs> Such a fiery yeah, log. But, but at the same time, like, eh, eh, where I'm from, like, no one would have batted an eye. <laughs> yeah. At that, you're like, yeah, you got to make the firework. What the fuck are you talking about? You think well, I'm cool. Where I come from, I'm a bitch. So, you know like. what, man? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you, dude. Like, because it's like a lot of fucking people where I'm from, whenever I go home, I'm a liberal city boy faggot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I go back. It's like, but then I come out here and they're like, it's like, it, that's why I relate with you uh, very thoroughly because I feel like you're also a man with no country. You know what I mean? Like, you're yeah. a man with no place. 
to, to exist because it's like when I when I go home, I'm a liberal city boy pussy. But when I'm here, they're like, "Wow, you country bumpkin piece of shit." I'm like, I don't. Yeah, that's the biggest thing with my accent that gets me is because I can. Like, and yours is much thicker than mine, too. So I bet that you you get a lot well, of bullshit, man. I do, but I can like I can mask it and I can hide it and I can I'm ditto, educated ditto. and I can like. But when I get comfortable Wait, you, or if I get you've been nervous, book learned, I've 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 been educated <laughs> once or twice in my life. <laughs> Impressive, man. Yeah. So is it, you say you you can you can mask it and you can. Yeah, and I do, and I don't mean to. And I've noticed that the more I do stand up, the more it comes out of me because the more oh, you're same. on stage, the more you same. have to be yourself. Because if you're not yourself, the crowd can see through that bullshit and Absolutely. can feel like, oh, you're faking it, and they will eat you alive. So you have to be 100 percent who you are, and so you have to take the good with the bad. And you're right. Part of my upbringing, part of who I am, is the way I talk. And so, well, dude, that's how we were talking about this earlier. Like, uh, most people who sound anywhere remotely close to us, which, by the way, most people back home in Dayton, Ohio, uh, all of you have accents. You can't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, this man has a much thicker, because uh, so, he's from uh, Arkansas. But, like, when I when I get in my bits and stuff like that, when I really get revved up, like, most of the time when I felt the most at home, I would be in Kentucky or West Virginia at a family yeah. reunions. Yeah. And like we would we play cornhole and shit like that. And I'd just be like, I'd fucking go deep into a fucking southern accent. And it's I also lived in southern Ohio, a place called Williamsburg. It was literally here's Williamsburg, here's the Ohio River. Okay. Here's Kentucky. So it's okay. I mean, it was right fucking there, yeah. man. So it's like so it, like my accent is like it, it feels more comfortable to me because it's it's w- what I grew up with and what I'm, I'm familiar with. That's what my family is. Yeah. Uh, and, and but yet, like a lot of people still don't understand how I can be from a, a northern state and have this particular accent. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get it. And like, I saw it the first time I was ever in Pennsylvania. Um, right? Dude, I there's went, so many southern accents there. Dude, I drove all the way from Arkansas to Pennsylvania. To have- <laughs> To have a girl tell me she liked me as a friend. <laughs> oh, bro. So, no. but while I was there, I learned a lot. Like, <laughs> I was in this little milk town that all they had was dairy farms, and we all went mudding and riding wow, four wheelers and stuff. Town. And I was like, holy shit, this is what we do back home. I did not expect this at <laughs> right. all. But it was a good time. That's hilarious, man. Yeah, that's, that's, that's such an interesting thing, too, right? It's like, I feel like, I, I feel like being almost like a redneck or whatever, or at least, at least having that in you, it isn't. It, it, it almost has nothing to do with where you're from, right? It's almost like I feel like it's kind of in a genetic level. You know what I mean? Well, that and also like my whole family is blue collar. Like oh, my, fair, yeah. Like mm-hmm. nobody. My grandmother, I think she might have got her associate's degree, maybe. Right. But for the most part, everybody in my family was like cutting horses, tractors, right. and oh yeah, you come you come deep, man. Because it's like my my um. I suppose my grandfather Arnold Clyburn, he who I'm named after actually, he uh I guess he was white collar, but at the same time he adopted a blue collar mindset because he he worked for Bankers Life Insurance for fifty years, which yeah. is you know it, for all intents and purposes a blue collar or white collar job. But at the same time, it's like all he did was go around and communicate and talk and with fucking blue collar people. You yeah. know what I mean? And like and then my grandmother especially, she's a she's a Jarvis. Which only makes sense to people in Kentucky. A Jarvis is th- so poor. <laughs> it's just uh, the Jarvises in Kentucky have no money. Yeah, in uh, Kentucky, Tony doesn't pay him. Like Iron Man has <laughs> too busy. <laughs> that was a great reference, my friend. That's another thing. People actually, because uh, I was always very small and nerdy in high school and stuff like that. People get so surprised that I'm a nerd. Yeah, I get that a lot too. Like I people bet you make do. Pokemon I bet you do. references. I was so and excited. I'll make them back oh. and. They'll be like, holy shit, I didn't expect that at That's all. That's why you're one of my favorite people. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my ex played uh, Sun and Moon a lot. Okay. Did you ever get that deep? No, I'd never played Sun and Moon. But, um, Were you OG 151? Yeah, absolutely. And the only reason I didn't get into Sun and Moon is because I had started comedy at that point. And so right, I was right. like, I'm going to spend my time. I know, dude. I wasted. Uh, 2017 will go down as the year I wasted with A, my ex, and B, Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the fuck that thing got deep. is that we moved to Hollywood and then my roommates got Red Dead too. And so mistake, mistake, mistake. I, I fucked up because I got rid of my PlayStation. I was like, I'm not spending any more time with this. But then right. my roommates oh, got Red right. Dead that's too. Thing to do. And then they put it in the living room, and I was like, oh. So I spent a lot of time where I should have been writing and going to Mike's, where I was being a cowboy. 
I know, I know. And you know what? Like a uh, good friend, John Morris. John Morris host. Or uh, shit. Rob Morris, host of uh, Robbing the People. Great fucking guy. My heterosexual life mate, pretty much, because we produce everything together. Uh, I was uh, staying uh, at his house one time, crashing there because I'm homeless. And uh, he just turned on Red Dead Redemption and started over from scratch. I watched him play that game for almost two hours. Yeah. it's. It was like I was just watching a cool movie, dude. It was insane. It's a cool movie that you can control. I know. Like, I, dude, I couldn't even imagine playing it. Little, I was just sitting there like, the whole fucking time. Do you mind if I use the restroom real quick? Of course, yeah. Oh, oh my God, we got our first comic using the restroom of all time. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Uh, let's see. What, what can I do while Bear's using the bathroom? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Let me give you guys. I, I, I rarely update you guys. I get so ADD'd out that I never talk to you beautiful, beautiful people out there. Um, fourth Wall has just opened up a fucking Hollywood location today. Today was the goddamn grand opening of the fucking Hollywood location. I'm so proud of Joe Manente, that badass motherfucker. He's opened up that fucking location. Um, uh, I was I was privileged enough to do some work on it and build some stuff in there and be a part of it. And uh, I'm very fortunate for that. Um, so now we are officially uh, <laughs> at every, eight, eight, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We are running. Uh, fucking two mics at a time, pretty much the whole time. It's so fucking cool, man. I'm so, I'm so proud of this place. I'm so proud of what Fourth Wall has to offer and what Joe Menente has created. Uh, it's so fucking cool, dude. Um, I I, I haven't talked to him today. Unfortunately, uh, I think he. Uh, but I, I, I'll probably hopefully I'll talk to him tomorrow. But he's been very busy running uh, the Hollywood location, and of course I'm going to be here uh, all the time because I'm always here all the time anyway. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, Super fucking stoked to uh, to to be uh, here more often in the North Hollywood co- location. And also, guys, I I don't I don't want any days off. I know that sounds so fucking weird. A lot of people don't don't understand. Like I mapped out my podcast schedule of doing podcasts for other people producing them, and then fuck hi there, uh, and uh, then. What's that? Let me finish this thought real quick. And then also doing my own podcast, and then doing the mics, and like. I had it. I I, plan, I mapped out one day that would have been sixteen hours, and then my brain was kind of like, "All right, it's like, sixteen you know hour I, day." Yeah, because it's it's one of those things where I fucking love this shit. You know what I mean? I know if I could do sixteen, but it's like I'm productively doing stand up where I'm right. either writing or working on something. That sounds like a hell of a day. I know, sign man. me up. I know, like, and that's and that's what's so cool, man. It's like I'm spending all this time making these podcasts great a lot of people a lot of people uh, I'm, I'm i'm i feel very fortunate because a lot of these people i produce their podcasts for them and i'd say 90 percent of them want me to talk on their podcast yeah like they just want me to be a part of it because i think i'm funny and that always makes me feel so fucking so fantastic man. Yeah. you know what i mean like they they, they they think i'm funny enough to just constantly comment on their podcast. see that's how i felt when you awesome. asked me to do this Oh, like, I appreciate yeah. that, man. Dude, of course I'd ask you to do this, man. You're fucking fantastic. It's, it, it, I figured it was only a matter of time before I got you back here, man. Um, so, uh, let's see here. What time are we at here? Oh, we still got 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. I, w- I want to know more about you, Barry, because you got some fascinating stories. I don't want you to burn the bit, Yeah. but I would like you to talk about the Alamo. Okay. <laughs> so, the, the story behind the story is... My buddy and I, we had gone from Russellville, Arkansas, to Harlingen, Texas, which is the very, very southern tip of Texas. Like, we could see Mexico. Too. Oh, yeah, that's 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 not fucking yeah. Texas, you know what I mean? The like girl yeah. I was dating at the time, her brothers were graduating from, like, a high school marine academy down there. I think they had... Oh, like, wow, so like, like a West Point-esque type thing. But right? for high school. Wow. Okay. And gotcha, so, gotcha, gotcha. like, J-R-O-T-C, but it was all, like, a boarding school, but set up to send them into the Marines once they wow. came of age. Anyway, they were graduating, and we had driven all the way down there. And then on the way back, my roommate, his the reason how I talked him into going with, because I didn't want to go down there by myself. Right. And I talked him into going, like, hey, on the way back, we'll stop in San Antonio, and we'll party, and like we'll have a night, we'll just hang out. And so we did that. On the way back, we stopped in San Antonio, and we had never been to Coyote Ugly before. So we went to Coyote oh, Ugly. you got to go to Coyote. I mean, yeah. you got to go to Coyote Ugly. Uh, uh, while you were there, by the way, did you stop at a, a steakhouse called Saltgrass? Uh, fuck yeah. Saltgrass Dude. has the best goddamn barbecue sauce I've ever Boom! had in my yes! life. Yes! I'm so happy you've been there, man. Dude, they had, they gave me a fucking 
bacon wrap cream cheese barbecue shrimp and when i put it in my mouth i immediately ejaculated <laughs> yeah <laughs> so fucking, okay dude, they, they, so yeah they, you know hit me, saltgrass hit me. has this thing i don't know if it's in Wimberley, Texas, or like it's between Wimberley and Austin, I think. I don't Wimberley remember specifically. Austin, okay. Yeah, but that's the restaurant I went to, and they had this amazing brisket, amazing sausage links. It's all grass. Yeah, yeah best barbecue dude, I ever had. Best I don't know what they're doing to their meat there, but they're doing it right. Yeah, it was like, delicious. Dude, the, the, like I, I, it would take me my entire life to figure out how they cook steak the way they do. Because I, I get steak rare. I mean, a lot of people, it's hard to fuck up rare steak. You just fucking. Yeah, crisp on each side and stuff like that. And dude, they they just presented me with a steak that was rare, but perfect rare. I don't. Saltgrass is very good. If you're I, ever in South Texas, go to Saltgrass. Yeah, if you have the opportunity. Just do oh it. yeah, you're on the river you, walk you won't in San Antonio. It. Jesus Christ, it's so good. Get that fucking uh, cream cheese bacon wrap shrimp. You will you will fucking explode. I mean, it's I I I'm aroused already. Uh, but so yeah, we uh, you were in San Antonio, right? Yeah, we went to San Antonio. We went to Coyote Ugly, and uh, buddy uh, was like buying body shots left and right, which was funny because they're like twenty bucks a pop, just a ridiculous body shots. So, how, how how good looking was the girl you're doing body shots off of? Twenty dollars worth for <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, I feel you, bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I fucking feel you. <laughs> So we had several. I don't know between the two of us. I don't know how many we had. Several. But <laughs> I love that word. We had several, yeah. <laughs> an uncountable number. <laughs> and you know, of course, oh, the bartender, or not the bartender, the bouncer was like, "Y'all, y'all got to leave." You know, the place is closing. So we left and didn't. That was the end of our fantasy. So we were just drunk and pissed off and left. <laughs> drunk, pissed off, and and, and this guy. I imagine. I imagine leaving a place like Coyote Ugly. You're. Your uh, sexual tension is yeah. at a fucking eleven. Yeah, you know what I mean, because you're you're doing body shots of a girl you were willing to pay twenty dollars to do a body shot off of. So I imagine you are next level revved up. Yeah, and but you know. and my buddy, we um we were in the same unit together, so we were in the reserves together. Nice, and had been through a bunch of shit where we were real close, and we came, we walked up, and just the Alamo was just there. Just the <laughs> Alamo. That's and we were like, oh, we're not just going to walk past. Like, <laughs> Isn't it so much smaller than you thought it would be? So much smaller. Dude, it's tiny. It's so it's, small. Dude, it, I, fourth wall is bigger than the Alamo. No joke. Yeah. I think it actually is for a fact. Dude, it's, it's really, bananas. really small. So, yeah. Oh, uh, and there's no basement, so you can't find Pee Wee Herman's bike. No, but there is... More than one Texas Ranger on guard, just in case anybody <laughs> was wondering. Oh my God! You guys, have, uh, hopefully one day you, you're going to record that bit because that was my favorite. I don't, again, don't want to burn it, but yeah. like <laughs> the surprise. <laughs> and I also love that like you thought you got past that first one, but oh, there's more. So <laughs> that's so goddamn funny. So if you want to hear that story, how, come how, see how, me. Yeah, up. absolutely. Come see, come see Bear do stand up and hear that fucking story in person because it's hilarious but now ha, are you how long are you banned from national parks um that was part of the exaggeration for the story oh okay okay so hey, i'm enough, but not I imagine you were banned from the alamo for for a long time right yes but not like in any they were like hey Get the fuck out of here! Don't come back. All right. And so and I imagine they I, thought they, you were young, drunk, right? And, young, you know, drunk, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. That they were like, "Hey, leave!" And so I was like, "Okay, I'm never coming back here." Fair. And I'm sure if I went back, they would not recognize me, not know that that was right. me. Yeah. What are the odds to get your picture on the fucking wall? Right. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be, like, dude. That would be epic as fuck. I'd be like, I'm gonna take my picture real quick. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody's ever been to the Alamo and sees my picture there, please send it to me. <laughs> that would be so awesome. Um. But it's okay. So you grew up in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, right? I grew up um, back and forth between. There's a little bitty town outside of Little Rock called Bryant. Not little bitty. It's a Bryant, big town. Okay. Yeah, Bryant. Oh, the, but yeah. an hour south of there, my grandparents had a horse ranch in Gurdon, which was a really little bitty. Gurdon. God and damn. So Gurdon sounds like a small town. It's. I graduated with, I think, 60 people, maybe. Damn, I had 75. You're the first person to fucking beat me and yeah. go to a public school. That's impressive. So, yeah. So, I went back and forth between Bryant and Gurdon, between my mom and my grandparents. Bryant and Gurdon. Damn. Yeah. That's, 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 that's pretty fucking cool, man. Like, I, I rarely meet people that go to smaller places than where I'm fucking from. But, I mean, like, 
middle of nowhere Arkansas. Like I, I drove through Arkansas to get here and stuff like that. I've driven through Arkansas uh, numerous times, like just to get to Florida or random yeah. like places like that. Like other than Little Rock, man, there is but fucking nothing in that state. Not a whole lot. Like you get up northwest, you get up in like Rogers, Fayetteville, that area. Um, oh, Fayetteville, Fayetteville, yeah. And yeah. then like southwest, you got Texarkana, which is Texas essentially. I was, and, say, I was, I was just yeah. that with Texas. But <laughs> I didn't know that was Arkansas. What Arkansas doesn't have as far as like big city life, yeah. we have everything else you could ever imagine it's fun to do. Like one of my favorite things to do growing up in the summertime, especially is like floating. There's so many rivers and, spring, and oh, bet, yeah. creeks and stuff that you can go float. And, and top notch floating creeks too, because it's like we've got uh, like really in Ohio, like we we got little Miami and stuff like that. But also like a lot of people have fallen asleep while fucking kayaking or fucking f- inner tubing down a little Miami. Yeah, and then gotten sucked in the goddamn like combine uh, dam. Damn. <laughs> like uh, that sucks. Yeah, dude, there was this crazy fucking story, man. Like. Uh, they, they they were trying to retrieve this little kid's body because he got sucked down. It was very sad. Yeah. Uh, into the into the dam, right? And these these divers go down. This is right on the Ohio River, not the Little Miami, by the way. So it's like a particular area where they got a power plant, which is like sucking shit in, blah blah whatever. So they go down there, and the divers come back up, and they look terrified. They freak the fuck out, and they're like, "What's going?" On? So we refuse to go down there without spear guns because they are catfish. That are twenty feet long, like, yeah. like just, dude. And especially, yeah, Ohio River. It's enormous. It's a, it's a giant river, dude. Yeah, and the Arkansas River. They got catfish that are like I've heard, like, you know, stories from old men saying that they're the size right. of BW bugs and stuff. Dude, it's, but it's, they're it, fucking big. I don't dude, know. Dude, it's true, man. It's, it's true though. Hundreds it's like, of pounds big. Catfish are just one of those particular fish where it's like they don't have scales. They have a particular skin. So catfish will just grow and grow and grow. Yeah. Until they get fucking killed or murdered or die of oil, like. So if they're in, a, and especially if they're in a place like the Ohio River, Arkansas River, something like that, they're just gonna get bigger and fucking bigger and bigger. It's crazy. So the kid got sucked. Like, would they not put like a chain link fence or something over the whatever <laughs> sucking in to keep the kid from no, getting sucked this, into the power this plant? Was a, this is a story my mom told me. So this was like '80s. So like in the '80s, they like, didn't have chain link fences. They didn't in the have 80s? seat belts in the '70s. That's 80s, true. Man. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> Like I love, I love hearing like crazy Gen X guys be like, "We didn't have seatbelts when I was growing up." I was like, "Well, most of you are retarded." So I, like, I can't imagine why. That's fucking ridiculous, man. Uh, <coughs> so you've been out here for a year. You live with. I haven't four- been out here for a year. I've been out here since November, so I've been. Oh out shit! Here for- so oh, that's, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, let's see. oh Rob Morris is coming. My grandma. She lives in my great uncle's church commune in Arkansas. The heel addicts with the Lord. I feel that. Like, sorry for super fucking high listening to you guys on each headphones, like a doctor. Yeah. Fucking, uh, Rob Morris, I'm so happy you're tuning in. Because uh, he's from Texas. Okay. He's a Texas man. What part of Texas are you from, by the way, Rob? Um, but like, it's so weird. It's so weird being from a place that is a northern state, and yet just bonding so much more heavily with people from the south. You know what's <laughs> fucking weird? It's so is funny. being... From a southern state that is below the Mason-Dixon line that was part of the Confederacy in yeah. the Civil War, and people be like, Arkansas, that's in the south? What? That's not like the I have west heard that and the before Midwest too. No, like, dude, it's it's south as fuck. It's right next to Georgia, right? No. Oh, it's not next to Georgia? No, no, no. no, no, no. It's, it's not, not next Alabama, to Alabama, right? Yeah, because there's Georgia, Alabama. It's the state north of Louisiana. So that's right, that's Texas, right, that's right. then you have Louisiana, Arkansas. I apologize for Between my Oklahoma and Tennessee. Bear, have you ever seen a Bigfoot? <laughs> no. <coughs> You've never seen a Bigfoot? Man, no, but I have seen right. a melanistic mountain lion, and if there's any what? wildlife biologists out there, I'll argue with you tooth and nail. Wait, so wait, wait, what was this? Um, scientists say that melanistic mountain lions don't exist. M- what is that? What melanistic is, that? is like, you know, albinism is when yeah. you're, uh, all the pigment turns white and yeah. animal turns white. Yeah. Melanism's, me, melanism is the opposite, where you get a lot of melanin in your skin. Oh, and, black. And your skin right? turns straight black. So and I've it, seen a it cougar. Just, it's, it's a Black Panther thing, right? Right. And they say, like, they've had it exist in some cat species, but there hasn't been a documented yeah, case in, se- in some cat species. Anyway. Oh, dude, there's uh, there's uh, mel- melanistic uh, tigers. Have you ever seen the black tiger? I have not. I don't think. It's the, or sorry, lion. Lion. It's the coolest fucking thing I've, I've se- ever seen. I've seen that on... Uh, Google, but I'm pretty sure that's fake. 
Oh, is it? I'm fucking pretty God. sure that's fake. You got me again, when, Internet. Because when I saw this fucking cat, I looked all this shit up, okay? And now, me and my buddy, his name's Garrison Rhodes. You can look him up. Like, yeah. He can attest to every Garrison word I'm about Rhodes. to say. But and that these the weirdest part of me it feels so trusting over a man named Garrison Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good dude. That's my buddy. Like Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> but uh, we um, and we know the difference between a mountain lion and a bobcat. And right. Arkansas does not have very many cougars at all. As, fact, as a matter of fact, there was for a long time the Game and Fish said that there was no breeding population at all. But oh, here shit. recently they have retracted that statement and said, you know what, there is. So they figured so, out they started fucking essentially. Right? Yeah, there there's yeah. there is very very few numbers, but. If you go to the backwoods long enough, you'll see mountain lions in Arkansas. Anyway, we had one that we were bow hunting, came upon us, and it was jet fucking black. And when I say black, I mean black as not. And it was terrifying. Cause Dude, I bet, man. What an ultra nighttime predator, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. You want to talk about shit your pants. Oh, dude, that's, the reason most of them don't exist uh, in the wild, especially, is because uh, it, it's just inherent in all animals. We see something different, and we want to kill it. It's like, so most of the time, albinos or, uh, you know, what you're talking about, mm-hmm. they're born, and the mother goes, what the, f-? and just fucking eats and murders it. It's Damn. really fucked up. I like, thought my mama was an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that's why, like, most of them, especially albinos, mainly only exist in uh, in captivity because we keep the mother from murdering it because it looks different. Yeah. Which is, it, that blows my fucking mind, man. But I also think it's so interesting that there's an albino version of everything. Yeah. Every single thing. Like but there's it, not a melanistic version of everything that we know. I don't know. There's a black Travis Clyburn out there. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. No, literally. There's <laughs> <laughs> three people on this planet named Travis Clyburn. One of them is a fat redneck from Ohio. And then there's me, also a chubby redneck from Ohio. And then there's a guy named Travis Clyburn who's a, a very attractive black guy. Cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what that means? We owned his people and I feel real bad. You know what I mean? Like we... I can't <laughs> well, that's real sad. It's sad, right? Yeah. Um... I don't know what I have to say about that. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, we don't say anything here uh, that will definitely probably ruin my career forever. It's fine. <laughs> I've recorded things on this podcast that uh, uh, one day I'm going to be on split screen defending. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, but I say, but I say this. I try to say this every episode. If you are, if I, if this is 10 years from now, this is uh, 20, 28, and um, I'm famous or something, or maybe I'm going to be. 2028 be nine years from now, but. <laughs> Go ahead. No, you're right, you're right. 2029. God damn it. <laughs> and, you know, and, and you're looking through my shit. And you're trying to find some stuff on me because you don't want me to host the Oscars. You don't want me to host a show of some kind. I've uh, already made it, so fuck you. Word? Word, yeah. motherfucker. Here's what I have to say No one loves you, and I hope you die alone. <laughs> I've I've been slowly but surely leaving messages for these people if they still exist okay. by the time we are anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, chances are pretty high uh, that they'll never hear it. Well, I just want to be a road feature right now. That's my biggest Dude, goal. Yeah, you'd be a killer fucking road guy, man. That's I'd what be, I did in Arkansas. I worked like Oklahoma, Tennessee, Missouri, Texas. That That's what I like doing. That's cool, man. I, and you know what? Like, the, But I feel like uh, you coming out here... Uh, I hope you shy away from your particular demographic because it's like you know you can kill with that demographic. But I would love to see you get on a stage and fucking murder city people, dude. That's what that's one of my favorite things to do. Okay, so I did a show in um, Memphis that oh, Memphis, dude. Dude, okay, so Latoya Polk, she's yeah. an amazing comic. She's been on Heart of the City and excuse me, Latoya, I'm forgetting some of your credits, but She's a great comic out of Memphis. Yeah. And she puts together this called Memphis Urban Laughs Comedy Festival, which what it is, it's a chance for black comedians to come up and perform in the situations where they wouldn't necessarily get otherwise. Right, For right. whatever a reason. Pretty super wide crowd or some shit like that. Right. right. And so it's right. essentially an all-black comedy festival. But she, like, it's not meant to be exclusive to where it's like we're excluding everybody else. It's just right. meant to give people that don't normally have a chance a chance. Right. And so it's like she has comics that are from other, other demographics come on. So she had me come on, and I had an amazing time and like getting up in front of a crowd that is completely different from anything right. that I've ever. Was it was it a mostly black crowd? Oh yeah, it was a hundred percent. Like me Dude, I, and one other comic, <laughs> the only white guys in there. 
But oh. it's amazing because you get to see like this, like comedy is universal. It doesn't yeah, matter. Right. It doesn't matter where you're from, it's what a, your background is, because funny is funny. It's a and beautiful you uni- unifying factor. And man. then you can relate with people that you would never otherwise had talked to before, whether it be <laughs> like, because Memphis, like Memphis throws the fuck down. Memphis gets rough at times. And dude, dude, Memphis has got some areas that I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, this is Tennessee. Like, I know that's where dude, this festival was. Dark, man. And it <laughs> was fucking badass. I, I didn't mean uh, dark because it's black. I mean like it's terrifying dark. Yeah, man. it's terrifying. Um, but no, Memphis is badass, and I love it. And I love what she's done there. And I love that I had that opportunity. And that those are my favorite rooms. When I'm in in front of a crowd where nobody in the crowd is like me, and nobody expects. Like everybody has got some negative connotation from what they've heard of a stereotype of what somebody that sounds like me is, and then I yeah. get to prove them wrong. That right there, I fucking get off on that shit, dude. Dude, yeah, I mean, and that's great, man. I'm glad you you know and own that too, because it's like you 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 give off a certain aura when you get on stage, but the moment you start talking, like accent aside, like you can tell that you're intelligent, well thought out. And fucking know what the fuck you're talking about. And it's like, it's such a beautiful way to throw people for a loop. That, and I love black rooms more than anything, and they love me. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I I fucking, I I killed so goddamn hard in a black room one time. I had uh, uh, four black dudes at the same time got up, ran out of the room, and like did a lap around the fucking comedy club and came back. <laughs> That's cool. The black guy runaway laugh is maybe my favorite thing of all I time. I don't think I've ever gotten one of them. Damn. That's oh, a, dude, that's a you, hell of a laugh. When you bear, oh, my God. When you get a black guy runaway laugh, <laughs> it's, it's such a real thing. Trust me. It's so real. <laughs> no, I believe it because I can see it. Like. It's incredible. They just go, ah, and they're just gone. They just leave. They just go away. And they just come back, and they're laughing just as hard as when they left. It's the fucking greatest thing in the world. It makes you feel like a king. It's it's so good, man. Oh my god, I want a black guy runaway laugh so bad. It's now. so good, man. Oh my god, it's something beautiful to strive for too. Because it's like, I just I just have a particular type of humor where I, I I'm just weird most of the time, especially the show stuff I do. That and it's, dude, black crowds love when I talk shit about white people yeah. or, or not white people, my white trash family. Like they hear that and like it, it white rooms in white even white trash rooms think it's funny. Yeah. But dude, when you take that next level, <laughs> it's next level when you go to black groups. Because like, not only is it they're happy, uh, white people are poor, <laughs> but also like it's just so f- much extra funny to them because it's a it's a world they don't well, it's, experience. Yeah, it's a perspective that they don't get to see very Ever. often. And they're like, and wow, you guys do that crazy shit. That's nuts. Yeah. Like, and, they, and, they like, and what it is is it's, it's so like, good. oh shit, I know seven of my uncles that have done the same fucking thing. Right. And you right. realize that we're way more alike than we are different. Dude, I know, and man. We, I, 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 I've said that for a long time. Like the, the comparison between rednecks, uh, Mexicans, and uh, black people, like. Uh, especially just any working class group of those races is exactly the fucking same. Exactly the fucking same, man. Like me and my buddy had this game when we would work as a mover. We'd call it a uh, white guy or Mexican or redneck or Mexican, right? Like when we'd be driving up north. Yeah. And there would always be like 20 pallets stacked way too high, tied down with a rope yeah. on a fucking like S10 or something like that. And every time we pass them, we go, Mexican, it was Mexican this time. <laughs> We've it's done that with hay shit. several times. Oh, yeah. Loading up like yeah, 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 especially in Arkansas, right? Trailers full of hay, just yeah. But no, you realize that we're all way more alike than we are different, dude. So much more alike, and man. that's what I love about comedy is because, like, you especially about LA, like coming to Hollywood and seeing just the other comics that are from all over the world. You got comics here from different countries, from different continents. From oh yeah, man, dude, all. like uh. Ever, do, the, the 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 amount of people and the amount of cultures that I've experienced out here, yeah, it's not even fucking just out awesome. Here, here, literally here at Fourth Wall is is insane. It's so crazy. Man. I love it. That's why I like doing comedy here because it, yeah. it keeps you on your toes and yeah. it like you it, learn, you grow. It just bronze your fucking horizons, man. Like no one will ever experience the amount of cultures that I've experienced unless they fucking get the fuck out of Ohio or where the fuck they're from and go experience it. Right. As you know. Like, I mean, even the short amount of time that you've been here, man, like... And you can see it on TV and it'd be one thing, but to actually go and experience it for yourself and to sit in that room where the dude from, say, Australia is doing a joke and it's not working and he's (laughs) sitting up there eating a giant bag of dicks (laughs) and there's one person in the room that understands what he's going through and that's you. (laughs) Because you're sitting there, you're like, I've been there, man. I know exactly what you're feeling. Dude, I love more than anything, like, uh, sometimes we'll have tent shows, and it'll be like, uh, 
be like you you got one Indian guy, uh, two black guys, white girl, blah blah. It doesn't matter. Like it's just so multicultural, and yet all of us are having such a good time, dude. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's a fucking like, it's, blast. It's it's so much fucking fun, man. And it, it it's so it it's beautiful. Like th- this place creates some magical fucking moments. I'm so proud of this fucking place. And we are out of time, my fucking fuzzy friend. Dude, awesome. Bear, fucking thank you for being on this podcast. Thanks man. for having me on, dude. I've had a blast. Dude, I'm going to have you on again for sure, man. It was so much fun to fucking learn about you and, uh, and just just talk to you in general. Because every time I hear this man's accent, I uh, feel like I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, dude, thank you so much for being on. Thank you guys so much for watching, by the way, you beautiful people. Uh, Rob Morris, uh, I'm glad you were stoned out of your mind. And uh, Seth Lawrence. Where are this dude's homies? Uh, oh yeah, uh, he 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 rolls single. You know what I'm saying? They uh, they're they're at their apartment apparently. Yeah, right. they're all at the house chilling. Fuck them. I'm sorry. Those fuck them. Those aggressive. Those I th- aggressive. Actually, I think they all went to see Taylor Thompson tonight. So fair fuck enough. Em. Fair enough. Uh, I may be moving in with you pieces of shit. Yeah. Some homies. Maybe. Anyway, <laughs> well. <laughs> That sounded uh, flirty. I, f- I feel like I have to blow this guy now. All right, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to Behind the Fourth Wall. I love all you beautiful people. I'm gonna I'm gonna be coming at you more often. I promise.